So you've been using JavaScript for a while and you've heard that you can run JavaScript on your desktop using Node. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can get started running JavaScript via Node. And you'll see that it's very, very simple. We can already start writing some code within a couple of minutes. So the first thing you need to do in case you haven't already installed it is head to nodejs.org and there you will be presented with two download options. You can either install the current version of Node with all its latest features, or you can install a stable version. Now, to start with, I would strongly recommend uh, installing the stable version because it's less likely to have compatibility issues with any third-party packages that you might want to use. So follow the download instructions for that, which are fairly straightforward, and then open a terminal. Now I'm using Windows PowerShell. You can just use the command prompt in Windows as well. That would be fine. Um, if you're using a Mac, you can use the inbuilt terminal. Uh, it's all going to do the same thing. So the first thing we want to do is check if Node was installed correctly. So to do that, I type Node and then minus sign for a flag v and that's going to return the version of node that i have installed so i can see that it's 16.14.2 that's the one that i saw on the node website um, if you're getting an error at this point you know that there's a problem with your installation and you need to go back a step and troubleshoot now, assuming that it's installed correctly, you can go ahead and start running JavaScript on your computer already. Just type node, you'll get a welcome message, and then you can type valid JavaScript syntax in here. So I'll say hello world, and that's going to, and that's going to display the console log message here, hello world, and undefined is coming up because there is no return value for this line of code. Um, but if I type so 2 plus 2, you'll see that the return value is being printed. But this isn't the way that we usually want to run JavaScript. We rather write a script and we want to ask Node to execute that entire script. So how do we do that? So to show you, I've created a script on my desktop inside here, Node example. So I'll just open that now so you can see it and it's just a console log message hello from script.js so i want to run this very simple script using node so it won't be running in the browser it will just be running on my computer so the way that i do that is i open my terminal first of all i want to exit node because that's still running to do that i press Control c twice and a little tip for setting the directory to node example, which is what I want to do now. You can just drag and drop the folder into the terminal and that's going to save you having to write it out. Okay, so I'm gonna set the directory now to node example. And then what I can do to run that script.js file inside is just type node and then the name of the script I want to run. So in this case, it's script.js. And now you can see it's returning the console log message there, hello from script.js. Now, rather than working from the command line like this, most people like to use a dedicated code editor like Visual Studio Code. Now, the nice thing about Visual Studio Code is it has a built-in terminal. So I can just close my terminal here and open a new one up, new terminal. And you can see it's pretty much the same as we had before. And if I type node script.js now, it's going to run that script. And that's because I imported this folder to the workspace before this video. So you can do that file, add folder to workspace, and then find the folder that you want to add. And then when you open the terminal, it's going to be automatically set to that folder. Now, although you can see that this valid line of JavaScript has run in the terminal, JavaScript running in Node is not exactly the same as JavaScript running in the browser. There are a few very minor differences. So the first one is that 
our global object is different. So in the browser, you can say console log window, and that's going to give you the global object. Here, it's going to say window is not defined. That's because window refers to the browser window and returns a lot of useful properties about that environment. But now we're running JavaScript on the desktop. So instead, we use the term global or global this. And what this is going to do, if I run, this is going to return some properties about this environment instead. Now you can see here that there are some familiar uh, properties here, such as set timeout, set interval. So you can still use those in Node like you would do in JavaScript in the browser. So we could say set timeout, pass in this anonymous function, and that's going to log a message to the console. I'm going to just say hello from script.js and then I'll give that a three second delay. So this is going to work in exactly the same way as it did in the browser. So you have these familiar um, set timeout, set interval uh, methods available to you. You can see there that it logged, but with a delay. So just run that one more time. You can see we're waiting and then the message is being printed. So just be aware that if you try to access the global window object, uh, it's not going to work. Instead, you need to access the global object in Node using either global or global this. So I'm just going to delete the this so you can see that this is going to return exactly the same thing back to us. Okay, so we get this global object again. Now, the reason that we have global and global this, uh, global is older, global this is a modern way to access the global object that you can use in both the browser and Node.js uh, as an attempt to unify the way that the global object is accessed. But you can use either one in Node. Global is probably still the standard because global this is new. Uh, it hasn't reached widespread adoption yet. Okay, so to show you that we are actually working on the computer, what I'm going to do is something you can't do with JavaScript in the browser, and that's write a file inside this directory here. So writing a file to the server. And the way that you can do that is you first of all need to import a package. So this is an inbuilt package. You don't have to uh, install it separately. It's going to be there. It's called fs. Okay, and then you can call fs whenever you need it to access the file system. So the way that we can use this is fs. I'm going to append a file, okay? And I want this file to be called, I'll just call it new file dot text. So the first parameter is the name of the file. The second argument you need to pass in is the content. So I'm going to say this is some text. And finally, the third one is a callback function. And that's going to have an error in it. So if there's an error, then I can say, so first of all, I check if there's an error. So if an error exists, then this if statement is going to be run because it's true. And I can say console.log, there was an error. Okay, else console.log file saved. Okay, now watch when I run this script, we're going to see, we should see uh, this file, new file.txt appear in this directory. So node script.js, there you can see we've now got new file.txt and here's the content. Now, one final tip to show you in this video a lot of people don't like um, having to go down here to the terminal and run this every time they want to run their application. Now, what you can do instead is install a third-party package called Nodemon, and that is going to run your script each time it is saved. So to install that, you can install it globally with npm. Uh, npm is installed 
automatically when you have Node. So if you installed Node correctly, then you can be sure that you do have this. You don't have to make a separate installation. So I'm going to use the G flag here. This means it should be installed globally and I want to install Nodemon. Now, once this is downloaded, what we're going to be able to do is write instead of node, nodemon script.js. So just like before, but instead of node, nodemon script.js. And what this is going to do is it's first of all going to run the script. And then every time I make a change to it, it's going to run it again. So every time I make a change and then save it. So I'm going to click save now. And you can see that the script was run again. Now, if you want to exit Nodemon, you need to press Control C, and that's going to bring you back to the terminal. So that is how you run JavaScript on your computer using Node. Now, if you did like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can see more content like this from us in the future.